Father Barnabas Powell is pastor of Saints Raphael, Nicholas, and Irene, Greek Orthodox Church of Cumming, Georgia, USA. Here's Father Barnabas with Sunday's homily. When I was growing up, I uh, grew up in a little Pentecostal church in Cobb County uh, near Smyrna, Georgia. And the pastor there, Brother Eugene Holder, probably one of the greatest men I've ever known, and a man who was as much a father figure to me as any man that has ever been in my life. Uh, but Brother Holder had his annual Santa Claus sermon. He didn't like Santa Claus. Well, of course, he didn't know any better. He didn't know there was actually a real Santa Claus, St. Nicholas. He didn't know. But he didn't like Santa Claus. And boy, he'd preach his sermon every year. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good, for goodness sake. He'd rant and rave about Santa Claus. Mothers would grab their kids and put their hands over their ears and run them out of the church before they could hear anything. And I, I've always thought that that was funny, but I mean, that's, that's, the way, you know, that's the world that I was raised in. And, uh, and we were very, very suspicious of anything that might take away attention from Jesus Christ. And that is such a silly reason to do anything. Because Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory. There's, he's not afraid, folks. He's not afraid somebody's going to get more attention than him. The only reason he warns you about that, the only reason why God ever warns you against idolatry is not because it upsets him, but it hurts you. So when you have a focus off of Jesus Christ and not on the Lord Jesus, the danger is on your end, not God's. God's fine. He doesn't have any problems at all. In fact, there's a little uh, joke that's going around the internet right now. Forgive me, folks. Let me fix this thing before it drives me crazy. Too late. Uh, the reality is there was this great joke going around on, the, on the, uh, the, um, the internet about kids sitting on Santa Claus's knee this year. And one little girl looks up at the Santa Claus that she's sitting on his lap and she says, uh, Santa, is it homoousios or homoousios? And Santa Claus says, what does that mean? She looks at him. Only my theologians are going to get this. She looks at him cross eyed and she says, You're not the real Santa. <laughs> and for the rest of you who didn't get that joke and didn't laugh as much as me and Dennis, look it up. <laughs> the stories of St. Nicholas are absolutely wonderful. Of course, one of the most famous stories is. Uh, St. Nicholas, of course, was orphaned when he was very young and his parents were very wealthy. And St. Nicholas committed that he was going to follow in the example of his uncle, who was a monk. Uh, and so he began to give his great riches away. He was extremely generous and known for his generosity all throughout Mira and all the area. And there were three young girls, I say young girls, three young ladies, daughters of this precious man whose business had gone under. I guess nowadays, we, a lot of us may know what that feels like. Their business, his business had gone under. And in that day, if your daughter didn't have a dowry, you couldn't get married. And there were only very few options open for women at that time. And one of them was slavery. And the others are too horrible to mention. So the reality is, these poor girls were probably going to end up in this really bad situation in their lives because their dad didn't have enough money for a dowry. For those of you in uh, the, the Greeks, the prika. Didn't have a prika. <clears throat> and so the story goes that one night, St. Nicholas put some gold coins in a sock and dropped it in the elder daughter's window. When she woke up the next morning, there was money for a dowry. She got married to a fine young man and she was very happy. Then pretty soon, the second daughter was of marrying age and St. Nicholas did the same thing. He dropped a little bag of coins in her window so that she could get married. And sure enough, she got married. Well, now when the third daughter came of age to get married, he went over to the house to do the very same thing, but all the windows had been shut and locked. So he, like he always did, he always tried to do things quietly and secretly so nobody would know it. So he climbed up on the roof. 
and dropped it down the chimney. And wouldn't you know it, the young girl's shoes were laying by the chimney, were laying by the, 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 uh, the, the, the chimney at the bottom there and to dry off, and the coins fell into her shoe. Next morning she woke up, there was money for her dowry. Hence the reason why a lot of children on the, the December the 5th, the night before, they'll put their shoes out so Santa Claus can put coins uh, in their shoes or little candies in their shoes for the, ne for the next morning. So uh, my girls are waking up this morning to find they have things in their shoes. St. Nicholas's generosity was so well known and so well beloved that brothers and sisters, we're talking about him today. And he lived in the 4th century. He served in the 4th century. He died at a ripe old age. And there were dreams and even tons of dreams after he died of St. Nicholas coming and rescuing people and insisting on the innocence of certain prisoners. And so the story of St. Nicholas continues to build and build and build and to this day we're talking about him because his generosity was so well known that it spread even to this day. And this time of year, this season of giving that we have nowadays, we're, our minds are drawn to the concept of generosity. And that's on purpose and that's a good thing because one of the great three disciplines of normal orthodoxy, folks, one of the great three spiritual disciplines of normal orthodoxy, the three great spiritual disciplines of normal orthodoxy, normal orthodox Christians, all of us do this. Do you understand me? This is normal. These three disciplines are normal in normal Orthodox Christian people's lives. Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving or generosity. And one of these three great disciplines that we focus on, especially this time of year, and I'm not just talking about the holiday season, this is also Stewardship Sunday for us, where we talk about the concept and the spiritual joy and the spiritual importance of your spiritual life. Remember what I said about God and idolatry? God does not ask you to be generous for His benefit. God doesn't call you to generosity for His benefit. God's fine. Old Brother Holder used to say, God owns the cattle on a thousand hills and all the taters under them hills. God don't have a money problem, folks. But make no mistake about it, if you lack generosity in your life, you have a spiritual sickness. You have a spiritual slavery in your heart that keeps you from becoming the man or woman that God has called you to be. So one of the spiritual disciplines of a normal Orthodox Christian life is the spiritual discipline of generosity. But what are the enemies of generosity? Well, I will be honest to you. We're going to talk about three great enemies of the, of the spirit of generosity in your life this morning. And it comes from our gospel lesson. You know the gospel lesson well. We see Jesus doing this over and over again in His life where He does something that the real religious people think is just horrible. Jesus heals this poor woman who's been over. I kind of know how she feels. My back has been giving me fits. She's been over and she can't straighten up. And Jesus heals her on the Sabbath day. They're gathered, in the, they're gathered in the synagogue to do the liturgy, and Jesus heals her on the Sabbath day. He does work. Oh, man, that's a no-no. The Sabbath, the leader of the synagogue gets very upset. And when he gets upset, Jesus looks at him and says, What's wrong with you, you hypocrite? Don't you untie your ox and lead him to water on the Sabbath day? And this daughter of Abraham, this person created in the image of God who is wounded and who needs help, on the Sabbath day especially, she should be healed. Why do you think we do liturgy, folks? Why do you think we practice the Orthodox faith? Habit? Good habit. Don't get me wrong. A plus. Good job. The purpose of you being Orthodox is so you will be healed, my angels. And you have a spiritual illness and a spiritual weakness and a spiritual impoverishment that keeps you away 
from being the man or woman God has called you to be. So the Lord in His goodness gives us the divine liturgy and the, the lifestyle of orthodoxy to make us whole. You are sick. You need to be made well. You talking about me, Father? <laughs> yes, I'm talking about you and me. This good work that we do is given to us for our healing from a God who loves us more than we ourselves know how to love. The three great enemies of generosity in your life are seen in this story today. Pride, ignorance, and self-centeredness. Pride, ignorance, and self-centeredness. Those three giants steal the power of generosity from our hearts to keep us from becoming free like God wants us to be free. Pride, first off, because look at this synagogue guy. This religious leader, the leader of the synagogue, he was the proistominos, the pastor. And he fusses at Jesus about doing something good on the Sabbath day. The only way he would feel the freedom to do that kind of silliness is because he was so filled with himself he couldn't see anything other than following the rules and the regulations. He didn't see the power that God wanted to give him to set him free from his self-centered pride. That's what steals generosity from your heart, folks. Pride. The next, gen the next enemy of generosity in your life is ignorance. This man had an idea about who God was that was so wrong and so misguided that he thought God would be pleased for him fussing at Jesus for healing this woman. He had such a wrong idea about God that it stole the power of generosity from his life. He couldn't rejoice that this woman was healed. This lady that had been for 18 years gripped by this Spiritual bondage and physical bondage, she's made whole. And he can't celebrate with everybody else because of his wrong idea about God. And brothers and sisters, make no mistake about it, your wrong idea about God, your wrong idea about faith, your wrong idea about what orthodoxy truly is steals the power of generosity from you, to, from you, from you so that you'll be free. A purposeful, active and proactive participation in your orthodox life fixes and remedies a wrong idea about God in your life. You may think that God's angry at you. You may think that God is the, the ultimate party pooper, the cosmic killjoy. That God's terrified. What, what was it? Uh, uh, somebody was saying one time it was either about conservatives or liberals that the idea of a conservative or a liberal is that the, the terrifying notion that somewhere somebody may be happy. People have that attitude about God. That God doesn't want me to be happy because He has all these rules. A wrong, folks, look at me in the face. A wrong idea about God in your life steals from you the power to be free in Christ. If you're ignorant about who God really is, and what God really calls us to, and how God has established His entire faith so that you will be free. If you're ignorant of that, if you're still in kindergarten, if you haven't grown up, if you haven't been curious enough to unpack the treasure of your faith, I want you to know the only person in the universe that's hurting is you. It's not bothering God. It's you that is suffering the consequences of the power of ignorance to steal the freedom of generosity in your life. Finally, self-centeredness. This great enemy of generosity means that my life is so small, my attitude is so small, my vision of, is so small that it only has room for my face in it. I don't see around me. But ladies and gentlemen, you need to understand that the power of the enemy of self-centeredness to steal generosity from you not only has blinds you to the outward needs of those around you, but brothers and sisters, this power of self-centeredness 
is so insidious and cancerous that it blinds you to your own poverty as well. It blinds you to to your own weaknesses, your own brokenness, and it leaves you a slave. Whereas God, who is the most generous of all in the universe, is completely self-forgetful. God is so focused on you. God is so focused on His world, the world and His creation that He loves more than we can even imagine. That every thought God has in His mind is about you. Every consideration that God has in His heart is about you. God loves you so much and He is so free and so generous that it never crosses His mind to be centered on Himself. You see, ladies and gentlemen, that's the power of generosity. The power of generosity sets you free. So when you're generous with your time or your talents or your money, when you're generous with your consideration and your heart, when you assume the best in others, not the worst, when you expect the best in others, not the worst, you're free. Because you see, brothers and sisters, the opposite of love is not hate. Watch this. The opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference. Is a lack of being attentive. Not being awake enough, attentive enough to pay attention to those around you and to know yourself well enough to know where you're broken and crushed. This morning... On this Sunday of St. Nicholas, the spirit of generosity has been shown to you by a God who loves you. And now He wants to ignite that same spirit of generosity, that flame in your own life, so that you'll be free. Freed from the worry and terror of self-centeredness, of ignorance, and of prideful neglect. This morning... I want you to be serious with your own heart about whether you're really generous or not. Brother Holver again used to say this. He said, honey, it don't matter how big the check is. The true measure of your generosity is what's in the balance. This morning, on this Stewardship Sunday, on this Sunday of St. Nicholas, in this season of generosity, Where are you allowing these enemies of generosity to overtake you and enslave you? And would you like to be freed from them? You can be. All you have to do is ask. Amen. You can follow Father Barnabas on YouTube or on our church website at stsrni.org. Thank you for watching.